in our industry, environmental insurance, and frankly, the environmental industry overall, there's a constant debate about uh, going green. Is going green good? Are we getting you know appropriate benefits out of our efforts for going green? Yeah, I mean it's a great topic to talk about. You know, there's obviously a lot of good things coming out of going green, but I, I don't think we should lose perspective about how we're impacting our environment by going green. Right. So I think it's a worthwhile topic to discuss today. So I think maybe a good place to start is is let's talk about where I think most of the efforts um, about going green have been focused. And it's it's mainly targeted towards carbon and mitigating carbon, specifically yeah. how do we mitigate uh, the anthropogenic introduction of carbon? You know, carbon that's put into the atmosphere through human processes. Conversely to, you know, natural processes, which would just be, um, you know, perhaps like a forest fire right. uh, caused by lightning or volcanoes, um, again, maybe perhaps precipitating into, you know, large scale fires. But there has been, um, since the Industrial Revolution, a, a massive increase of carbon in the atmosphere. And all of that carbon has been taken out of storage. And that storage is in a couple different ways. You'll see storage of carbon in polarized caps through just trapping of, of right. air in, in polarized caps. Or you could see storage, frankly, through the geologic process. And that's where most of the carbon is trapped, is, is through that geological process. And we can see this and monitor this through the geologic record. You know, we've taken core samples and performed those studies. Um, but what we have never seen in the past is the rapid increase of carbon in the environment through anthropogenic processes or causes. Um, and that is where all of the focus for uh, going green has been, um, has really gained all the attention. Yeah. What I think is interesting is no one's talking about, you know, the other ramifications of some of the instruments, the equipment, or some of the other things that go into going green. It could be waste created from the wind energy industry. Mm -hmm. uh, could be the um, solar panels after they've already achieved or been consumed, their usable life has been consumed. Not even to mention, and I'd love to get into this, considerations around sourcing the material that goes into the equipment that supports the green industry yeah. and the waste created. I'll kind of throw it out to you. What What do you think? Let's dive into how the process of extracting some of these green materials is going to impact the environment in mm -hmm. the short term and long term. And what are we doing to acknowledge those? I think when you're talking about electric batteries, electric engines, you know, those are some very rare and precious metals that are used uh, to build those. And it's not an easy extraction process to get those out. Manganese, cobalt, mm -hmm. you got to mine that stuff. And it can take, you know, examples of mines I've seen. It's 55,000 gallons of diesel fuel a day, a million gallons of water. So we're dumping carbon back into the environment using right. 55,000 gallons of diesel a day. And where is that water coming from? And who are we taking it away from? Right. I think those right. are all implications that we need to look at as we are extracting those resources. Yeah. And then, as you mentioned, we can spin off later and talk about what are the long-term implications of having those precious metals right. in disposal sites later on in the process when they're no longer being used. So that's really interesting. When you're saying 55 gallons of diesel, that's that's 55 gallons of diesel per unit extracted. Yeah. Right? It's not just 55 gallons. Yeah. When you do the math and you realize you know how much resource has to be consumed in order to extract the other resource that you're looking for to fuel this green industry. You know the numbers become staggering. There you are. I think you may have been um, alluding to the book by Siddharth Kara, the uh, the Cobalt Red book. There he talks about sourcing of material that goes in in everybody's phones, as well as um, I think it was up to sixty kilograms of of cobalt goes into each electric vehicle. So you know you look at the supply chain of what is needed to create these materials that we are using and, and pushing and creating to abate carbon in the atmosphere. Yep. You know, it almost begs the question, 
you know, what are the other kind of knock on effects that we might be creating from our effort to, to mitigate and abate carbon in the atmosphere? You know, that's just one metal, mm. one extraction process. You've got to multiply that across multiple metals that are used right. and, you know, multiple locations across the U.S. and the world. And this isn't just a problem that's only in the U.S. It's happening in foreign countries that have, you know, this mining going on. And they're not necessarily in the minds of Americans every day because they're sort of out of sight, out of mind. You know, there are some serious negative implications that the mining will have in those countries and those regions as well. And I think we need to look at what those long term implications are going to be to the environment because we haven't really studied those because this mm. is all new technology. It's all new avenues that we're traveling down to try and fight off putting more carbon into the environment. And while I agree that we need yeah. to restrict the amount of carbon that goes into our environment, absolutely. We, we also need to have that balance about what are we doing on the other side of the equation? Because we yeah. want things to be evened out as much as we can. Yeah, definitely a more measured approach. Yeah. And making sure that everybody's informed as to what goes into generating that clean energy. Mm -hmm.